Have you ever wondered about your dropper post and the mysteries that lie deep buried within? Is it too high? Is it too low? And today, we're going to find out how to properly size that bitch for you. Let's get on topic. Hey everybody, it's Thomas with Get Out Arizona and you are watching another fantastic, exciting, thrilling episode of Toolbox Topic. Did I oversell it at all? No. Okay, there we go. All right. <laughs> We're coming to you once again from Trek Bicycle Stores of West Phoenix here in Avondale, Arizona. Why? Because it's where the cool kids hang out. And me, as usual. And I'm with my co-host, Wyatt Spaulding. Wyatt, how the That's hell are you? Doing good. Nice. All right. In case you couldn't gather from that overly dramatic intro, we're going to be talking about dropper posts today and how to properly size a dropper post, either for a bike that doesn't have one, yep. or if you're looking to upgrade, talk about some things you should look for, pros and cons of other dropper posts. So, Wyatt, take us away. This is your wheelhouse. I know nothing Definitely. about dropper posts except for, hey, guys, this is what I want. Will it work? Gotcha. So yeah, say this is a customer's bike, they just dropped it off, they want to get a dropper post on here, see what, what they could fit. Um, first thing we'll probably want to check um, is confirm with whoever is getting it um, that this is going to be their ideal saddle height um, so that we can reference that for how big of a post they're going to be able to accommodate um, for the travel on there. Um, Speaking of big posts, where's Brandon at? And that goddamn mustache! I tell you what, he's, he's been slacking! Shitting his pants. Man. He's shitting his pants? Did you get into some bourbon last night? <laughs> bourbon and bad pizza? <laughs> or was it sushi? Don't right, talk about it. Brandon that way. Shut up. You're a pussy. Hey, get away, little brother. <laughs> All right. All right, mind. guys. But so we, we've confirmed with the customer that this is the max saddle height. This is, you know, what they're comfortable riding. Um, so we're going to look at a couple measurements. Um, obviously, when you're looking at dropper posts, you're going to have a varying lengths of travel. Um, for instance, like this one back here that we have is 150 millimeters of travel, so pretty long post. Um, we're going to want to pay attention to that primarily. We're going to find the diameter that we're going to need as well. This could be a 31.6 millimeter. Um, you'll see other sizes out there like 30.9, 34.9. Um, so make sure you're, you're getting the right diameter because um, obviously if you throw a bigger one in there, it's not going to work at all. Um, the main thing we're going to look at here um, is kind of how much post we have sticking out. Um, so if you look here, right at the from the bottom of the seat clamp to the saddle rails, I've got about 18 centimeters. Um, so that's what we're working with here. Um, the, on the box here, they'll give us the travel, the outer diameter, 31.6, and the total length. Um, the length is going to matter a lot, um, depending on the frame, how much of the post can stick in the frame. S some frames, like full suspension bikes that have kind of weird curves going on, um, you're only going to be able right. to stick the post it's so gonna far in. It's bottom out at, yeah. a, at a shallower depth yeah. as far as that goes. Or if you have a bottle cage. Exactly. If you have bottle cage for, yeah. like mounts, rip nuts in there, it's not going to go past those most of the time. Um, so that's a very critical thing to pay attention to. Because um, say someone has a 150 post and they want to go up to a 200 millimeter post. Well, a lot of times that post is going to be longer overall. Um, and it may not even bottom out fully. So make sure that's gonna work. Um, the main thing we're gonna look at here, um, since the customer doesn't have a super high saddle height, we're probably not gonna be able to fit a very long travel post on this bike. Um, most likely just a 100 millimeter, maybe a 125 millimeter post. Most likely just a 100 millimeter though. Um, and the way we're gonna confirm that is we see here on the post, um, this frame, the dropper should bottom out fully. Um, there's no water bottle mounts there. There's no crazy curves or anything. We should be just fine with it sitting all the way down in there. Um, so quick question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For people who are vertically impaired, yeah. and by that I mean you're declared a midget in 43 states, <laughs> is it possible that, I mean, Mm -hmm. They just can't get a job proposed. Like there's not going to be yeah. one that's properly sized for them, and yeah. mm -hmm. they either have to maybe get a different bike yeah. that might be slightly a larger frame than what they'd be yeah. used to. I mean, there's uh -huh. got to be uh, some limitation as far as definitely body height. Yeah, like say this customer brought this bike in and they were a little bit shorter, and this seat was two inches lower. They're pretty much screwed. Um, some companies make really short dropper posts, like 80 millimeter and. and I think I've even seen some 60 mil ones, but Shoo. at that point, it's not really anything. Yeah. You know, travel wise. Um, Seems like $150 down yeah, the drain. And yeah, exactly. And you're not going to be getting the full benefit of having a post that's at least, you know, 125 to 150 millimeters of travel. Um, so that's a 
good thing to think about for sure. Well, oh, and here's my other question too. Mm -hmm. So I'm a chunker. Everybody knows that. I talk about the inner fat kid all the time. <laughs> And I know there's other people out there that are they're as robust or more robust than me. Mm -hmm. And by that, guys, yes, I'm saying sometimes we have a fat ass. Mm -hmm. What's the weight limit on these? And should customers who are maybe that are starting their journey, let's say, yeah, uh -huh. you know, and I think it's great for everybody. Don't get me wrong. It's a battle for me, but they're just starting their journey. Is there a weight limit? Mm -hmm. And they might just like, hey, you're going to have to wait you know, yeah, for, to lose uh, a little bit more weight for the dropper post, not only to work properly, but not mm -hmm. to break. Not I mean, break, even the yeah. bikes have weight limits as far as I, that goes. I haven't been aware of any weight limits. Okay. So hopefully they work for those 300 pound dudes, you know, okay. hopefully I haven't seen a weight limit. So, okay, um, good. No, good to you know. know. Yeah, I think it's okay. I think I think pretty much everyone will be able to use one. Cause um, like I know on the crank brother pedals, yeah. some of the higher end ones, they yeah. they like specifically say no dude it's 220 and that's 220. rider wow. and pack included wow. yeah. yeah so they're it's it's no joke so that's why i was just yeah. curious as just far pay as that attention. goes yeah, yeah and like absolutely. i said earlier there's different diameters um there are a lot of new posts now that are coming out on on uh bikes they're 34.9 millimeter so it's just a thicker diameter um which means the whole post is thicker which creates a stiffer stronger post um so maybe for someone that's heavier um just out of you know the safety in their head they might want to go with something like that okay um just because it's going to be stiffer more durable setup than especially like a post that's like a 30 30.9 this 31.6 probably be fine but yeah the skinnier you go everything gets skinnier um everything involved in the post so right definitely not, it's not stiffer be as stiff or or durable yeah but yeah you should, right. should be okay with durability and all that um are these thing, seriously I mean, tell you to what what gear you're in am i seeing that right yeah shift indicators dude gotta love them <laughs> I should get some of them. <laughs> no, you don't want those. <laughs> so basic, uh, we just need to make sure for this customer that the pretty much shortest travel post we're going to have to offer them is going to work. I'll hold that for you. Okay, sweet. So we've got this. I see, you can't see it in the video, but the collar of the post down here is like three centimeters long. Um, so let's pretend this is a hundred millimeter post. I say that, okay. That 100 mils of travel is going to start at this three millimeters or this three centimeters right here and if i hold that up 100 mil travel will work just fine with this bike they'll actually have a little bit of room to play and it does look like they could actually go with 125 mil as well um but that would be the max the next jump up here to 150 millimeters would be way too big way too much yeah this post would not work okay. at all their saddle is going to be a good Sky few high. inches higher than okay. it is now, and if that's if that's how they're used to riding it, it's not going to work. But that's how you see if you know a 125 is going to work or a 150 is going to work for okay. you. You just need to take those basic little measurements, um, and you're you're referencing your saddle height. So, like I said, make sure you that you know that your saddle height is going to be good, um, and what you're referencing is is where you like it. So. Man, I don't know how it is in the rest of the country, but at the tail end of summer here in Arizona. Flies, flies everywhere. Everywhere. It doesn't matter how clean or how filthy the area is, flies. Just, and yeah, why it's been trying to get this fly. I've been trying. Oh <laughs> shit, dude, it's on you. No, get, get out of here with that, dude. You're gonna get salt in my eye. Man. It was on you. It doesn't matter, I dude. I could've got it. I don't need salt in my eye. All right, I'm sorry. Man. <laughs> And then I'll be blind, and these videos will really suck then. It's hard enough doing this shit with two good eyes. I, I can't get a good angle with blind. <laughs> I can't get a good angle regardless. <laughs> Joking, guys. See, not only do we make fun of the Canadians and the French, as well as those homos on Global Biking Network, but we take pot shots at ourselves because we're equal opportunity that way. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're English charts, too. No, we're not. God, never do that. <laughs> it's worse than saying I can't find a good angle, man. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Oh. <sighs> no, we joke. We don't really hate the English. Yeah, they're nice. They could drink good tea. Just the French. No, yeah. joking, guys. All right, <laughs> all kidding aside. So, so now we know how to properly size, yep. you know, and get the adjustment and everything like that. So now, as far as different droppers, obviously mm -hmm. we have like the tram access reverb, mm -hmm. like I have on mine. We have your basic mechanical, mm -hmm. which is going to be like on LA May. That's an air cartridge, yep. and then you have the hydraulic ones. What are the pros and cons, and what are some of the things that people should keep in mind when they're either looking to swap out their rigid post for a dropper post, oh, maybe just upgrade mm -hmm. um, to a dropper, a different yeah. dropper post? Mm -hmm. What are some of the things they should be aware of? Definitely, yeah. So I, I'm a big fan of of air cartridge posts. Um, that's going to be like uh, any of the Bond Trigger posts, P and W posts are going to be air cartridge, like one up posts. Um, I like those because they're simple, they're easy to service, and they're cheap to service most of the time. So um, you know, if you need to get an air cartridge and rebuild the 
thing. Completely, it's not too expensive, and okay. most shops will know how to do it. Um, I would typically steer clear of hydraulic posts like the old style reverbs where it's a, a hydraulic lever as well just because those always tend to lose their, their bleed pressure. Um, they're kind of a bitch to bleed. Um, shops don't like working on them. Right. Um, so service is pretty expensive. And if you do ever have an issue that's more than just a bleed, it's the price of service is going to out cost the post. You might as well just get a new post yeah. at that point. So I don't think okay. they're very solid for that reason alone. Okay. Um, other hydraulic posts, like the wireless access post, which is hydraulic, but it's all contained in the post itself, it's awesome because then you don't have to deal with that whole line um, issue and it's wireless, right. it's kick-ass. And you guys have serviced mine before just yeah. because it was time for that 50-hour service yep. or whatever and uh -huh. that was... And that's you know. not, yeah, that's not too bad of a service even. Yeah. Um, and wireless is awesome. You can't complain about that. Um, I have actually seen, though, even Fox transfer posts, um, th that being a kind of hydraulic system, but it's still cable actuated. Those I've seen, I've seen a lot of issues with. Okay. Um, they're really awesome um, because they're the way they're designed. They feel really good, and they're pretty reliable. Um, but kind of same deal with the the old reverbs. They're pretty expensive to service. Um, most shops won't service um, the transfer posts because they're pretty hard and gotcha. they're time consuming. And then you got to send it to Fox. It's like 155, 60 bucks, um, and then you wait. You know. Their, their Six times weeks. are not good ever. Yeah, they're always backed up. So you're uh, without a post. I can only imagine what it is on now. End. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so that's I just, like the air post. Yeah, yeah. stuff mm -hmm. to keep in mind, guys. Um, obviously, you've not only seen me wait for parts here, you mm -hmm. know, on stuff not just that I order, but stuff that I'm waiting just to get back on the road. Um, so it's not something that you want to do because I know I'm miserable when I'm not able to ride. Yeah, it my sucks. bike. So it's mm -hmm. it's really a pain in the ass. Um, now, as far as positioning, and then we'll, we'll close out on this, uh, typically I have my post set up to where the max height, I got max leg extension, and that's for when I'm going balls out in the flats or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then if I'm downhill, I drop that thing all the way down so I can get really behind that back tire to you know, maximize yep. my stability. And then when I'm climbing, I'm a little up from bottom, just yeah. so if I have to, if I tilt or bang off a rock yeah. or skip or something, I can get both feet on the ground yeah. so I'm not actually tipping over before I get my foot on the ground. Yeah. And then just like, I would say that regular terrain, you might have to quick adjust, slight downhill, uphill, whatever. I have it almost like at a three quarter height, yeah. uh -huh. but I don't leave it there for long because if I leave it too long, then my knees will start to hurt a little yeah. bit. I can tell after it was like, hey, I gotta bring it up just a little yeah. bit. Uh -huh. um, is there really a right or a wrong way as far as positioning on that? What are some of the things huh? people should keep in you've, mind when they're using got it? it? You've got it dialed. That's how you should do it for sure. Okay. Um, and that's the, the main thing that only really matters there is having that full top out at your saddle height. Okay. Like I've seen some people get the dropper post and they, they think it's more of like a quick adjustment thing where like you can put it wherever you want, but no, you want it at full top out to be at the saddle height that's perfect for your, your fit and your body. Um, just so that you know the majority of time when you're pedaling that you have that you know the right fit going yeah. on there um, but I do the same thing though like uh, on the endurance mountain bike rides and stuff where mm -hmm. I'm on the bike for a lot of time like I I'll even just drop it like a hair and pedal at that rate for a you know, couple minutes or so just to kind of mix things up and like get a different pressure on the sit bones for a second um, and then of course drop it you know on yeah. the descents and all that um, but it's really versatile and like you said those situations where you're climbing something super steep and it's kind of sketchy you, you don't really want the seat that yeah. high but you still want it up and a little some of that shit it's out perfect. in Verado, dude and yeah. i know you know those trails really yeah. well you're mm -hmm. the climbs are steep and the single tracks narrow and yeah you tilt the wrong way and can't get your foot down enough yeah you're, you wanna... you're dropping 20 30 feet yeah so yeah so pick they're, this... they're so nice like, yeah I, I have one on my, my single speed and it's really awesome just because a lot of times on the single speed you're out of the saddle climbing. Right. So you can drop the post and be out of the saddle climbing and you're rocking the bike back and forth and post nowhere to be found. You know, your seat's not bothering you at all. So nice. they're amazing pieces of technology that uh super thankful for, for sure. <laughs> now, you know? did you start riding? Because obviously why it's a lot younger than I am or Brandon for that matter. We're kind of mm -hmm. getting up there in age. Remember when you had to actually the the quick release clamp and that's the crazy thing. Drop my, it. My first mountain bike had a dropper post. Oh, okay. I got a mountain bike in like twenty. Born with an iPhone. Twenty eighteen or some shit. Pretty <laughs> recently. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, and you used to do BMX though. I used to race BMX. Yeah, yeah, but then you know you just always had the seat down anyways. Yeah. 
So I, you know, I was born into a time when mountain bikers still used rigid posts. But right. when I got into mountain biking, yeah, I know nothing other than dropper posts. <laughs> you know, the life, yeah, the yeah. life, streaming so, only. So yeah, I'm all right, spoiled. Yeah. Yeah. aren't we all in some ways so and just to give you guys a quick update too that new handlebar that i put on there that 820 millimeter carbon 35 handlebar yep. mm -hmm. working amazingly well it's a whole new bike now little things like that you may not think will make a difference but having that proper stance yeah mm -hmm. that's comfortable for me and it added just a little bit more responsiveness to yep. it having uh -huh. that wider stance so yep. just little update on that again i think a handlebar is not something i need to do a full review on but to let you know it was it was definitely worth the cost of the upgrade on that so um yeah all right on that note why does you think there's anything that we've forgotten anything else we need to mention to the folks at home no pretty much just recap you know make sure you got the right outer diameter for your post uh, make sure that's going to work with your frame make sure that the length the overall length of your post is going to fit in your frame before you go spending some cash and then make sure that you take that measurement from your saddle height that's already set Make sure that the amount of travel above the bottomed out seat collar on the post is going to fit. Um, then you should have great success. Awesome. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. Now, if you have any questions, you know we're an interactive channel. We love to hear from you. Put them down in the comment section below. Or you can follow the link down below for Check Bicycle Store West Phoenix. Give them a call and they'll be more than happy to assist you with whatever you're looking for. We also ask that if you enjoyed the show today, Give us a little bit of extra support by hitting the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell notification icon. This way, whenever we post a new video, you'll be one of the first ones to know. And on that note, I think that's it. Yeah. Awesome. All right, guys, what do we always tell you? Be kind to yourself and others. Be amazing stewards on that trail. And we have to ask, what are you waiting for? Get out Arizona. Yeah. We'll see you on that next adventure. Wyatt, thanks a lot for being course, with us again. Huh? Take care, guys. See you guys. Perfect. Nice, that was smooth. Yeah, that was smooth.